Hello, welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program is uh, brought to you by uh, the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which hosts the D digital slides. And it, that's a joint effort of uh, the Digital Pathology Association and uh, PATH Presenter. Uh, I'm coming to you courtesy of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and the Stevenson, Oklahoma Cancer Center, which as uh, we are proud to say is an NCI designated cancer center and particularly noted for its expertise in gynecologic oncology uh, where uh, and where last year we entered uh, more patients into clinical trials than I think any other NCI center. So we are pleased to see the progress of our cancer center and uh, have some wonderful cases of which today's is an example. So this woman is a 72 year old woman uh, who had some postmenopausal bleeding and as a consequence of that, she had an endometrial biopsy at an outside institution which showed carcinoma. Uh, from that, she uh, was referred to our cancer center and uh, resection was undertaken. Here's a representative section of her tumor, which was a bulky tumor in the endometrium. Uh, and as you can see, quite deeply invasive into the muscle. At low magnification, we see a couple of things that are quite striking. One is this uh, very sieve-like, glandular, nested pattern up some areas, but other broad areas where it's more solid and interposed with uh, a, a different sort of morphology, more myxoid and more eosinophilic uh, and so forth. So there seems to be a heterogeneous composition to this tumor. And let's go down and look uh, first at the surface, uh, the uh, endometrial type surface. And here in this particular area, I think we can see that this tumor does have a strong resemblance to uh, uterine papillary serous carcinoma, very high grade nuclei, small micropapillae formations, small glands, high NC ratios, abundant mitotic figures. Uh, so it's easy to understand how this could be snipped off with a curettage or a biopsy and be interpreted as endometrial carcinoma, uh, end of story. However, uh, what we often find is that uh, sometimes uh, we overlook these uh, stromal elements that may come along with that or, or downplay their importance. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this stroma is also quite atypical. Uh, these are not uh, bland uh, fibroblastic uh, uh, or smooth muscle type cells or even endometrial type stroma. These are uh, very atypical and mitotically active uh, elements of the tumor itself um, and have uh, a sarcomatoid uh, appearance. Um, so taking those two things together, uh, high-grade endometrial carcinoma and this uh, sarcomatous appearing stroma, or at least very cellular appearing atypical stroma, one should uh, strongly entertain the notion of potential carcinosarcoma or malignant mixed mullerian tumor. Um, Looking a little bit further at this, we can see in other areas, we have a somewhat different morphology. Uh, we go from well-defined glandular structures to more undifferentiated tumor over here uh, with uh, block-like uh, cytoplasmic uh, uh, contours. Um, very, again, very high NC ratio, uh, malignant appearing uh, nuclei, and uh, fairly frequent mitotic figures or a, uh, apoptotic bodies. We'll look at another area because this tumor has quite a number of different morphologies. As we look through these areas, one of the things what, that we're scouting for is, do we have heterologous elements? Uh, do we have any evidence of skeletal muscle differentiation? Do we have evidence of cartilage or bone? And sometimes the thing that will tip us off is uh, clusters of cells with uh, very eosinophilic cytoplasm, uh, inclusions within the cytoplasm, uh, some sort of evidence that there may be some striated muscle development of an abortive nature that's trying to happen here. Uh, here we see more of these kinds of cells here uh, and here. So there's some evidence here that there may be some uh, abortive skeletal muscle differentiation we we'll look at these other uh, more loose mesenchymal elements here. Um, sometimes you can find cartilage in these tumors. Occasionally, they'll even form osteoid uh, type areas. Um, 
And if there's a question involved, uh, such as maybe in an area like this, we may want to do um, some smooth muscle or uh, skeletal muscle markers, uh, such as uh, myogenin uh, or uh, myoD1, to see if these are, in fact, strap cells that have uh, just been uh, turned sort of on end and uh, not uh, showing us clear cut cross striations. Occasionally, you'll see strap cells with. Uh, good cross striations, and then the diagnosis can be made uh, without uh, resorting to uh, uh, special stains. Again, we note that in this uh, more sarcomatoid component, we do have atypical mitotic figures, and, and that makes the diagnosis of uh, carcinosarcoma uh, fairly simple uh, to uh, go for. Um, so, carcinosarcoma is uh, a uh, relatively uncommon uh, disorder, typically presenting in elderly women, as this uh, woman is, although we have seen some cases in patients as young as their late 20s and early 30s. Uh, we have concomitant high-grade carcinoma, and it's important to emphasize that it's a high-grade carcinoma with some sort of epithelial to mesenchymal transformed neoplasm which may or may not have uh, heterologous differentiation into other mesenchymal tissues. Most commonly, the carcinomatous element is serous, as we have in our case today. And these may be associated with some loss of uh, mismatch repair function, as defined by immunohistochemistry. But they're almost always associated in both components with a p53 mutation. There also will be often expression, uh, blocky presentation, uh, expression, strong expression of p16. And both components may also express some epithelial markers, either in the form of EMA or pancytokeratin. As I've mentioned, sometimes superficial biopsies can either miss the sarcomatoid component or the diagnostic clues may be missed in some circumstances. Now, carcinosarcoma is not a tumor that is limited to the endometrium. Uh, and in fact, uh, here's a nice example of a uh, carcinosarcoma arising in the ovary. Uh, again, we can see that this is a heterogeneous tumor. Uh, it has sort of diffuse areas. It has more lobulated areas, has areas of necrosis. And uh, going to higher magnification, we can see that there are some nicely defined epithelioid type uh, structures, uh, glandular or corded structures here, with an intervening cellular and mitotically active uh, uh, stroma. Again, we would want to go through the same sorts of uh, processes and search for heterologous elements, search to characterize the nature of the uh, uh, carcinoma and uh, classify that. Here we can again see these abortive epithelioid uh, components uh, amidst this stellate and myxoid stroma with, oops, wrong direction here. An occasional strap cell that looks a little bit myoid. Um, and again, this is a case where on uh, further search, uh, we did find some uh, additional elements. You see these eosinophilic cells here, uh, sort of granular and somewhat strap-like, occasional uh, rab rhabdoid cell uh, features uh, that uh, on immunohistochemical staining would uh, identify occasional um, myogenous uh, differentiation. Now, one consideration is what do we do in the circumstance where we have a low-grade endometrial carcinoma, and then we have some sort of abnormal stromal component? This is uh, quite rare, but not unheard of, and has been nicely described uh, in a nice recent article from the International Journal of Gynecologic on uh, Pathology. Um, and these low-grade tumors are termed uh, endometrial adenocarcinomas with a spindle cell component, uh, such as we see down here, or endometrial, car endometrial carcinomas with uh, corded components. And these uh, almost can look sort of like a mixed tumor in some ways with a sort of chondroid type of element or a diffuse uh, element uh, to them as well. And they should not be con confused with 
a high-grade carcinoma with high-grade sarcomatous elements, uh, as we have described in the carcinosarcoma and mixed mullerian or mixed mullerian tumor. So, with that caveat, our final sign-out today is carcinosarcoma or malignant mixed mullerian tumor with heterologous elements and deeply invasive into the uh, myometrium beyond 50% of the wall. So hopefully that brings into focus this uh, uh, case today and will open uh, a few doors for you uh, in your work. Uh, thanks for joining me. Please uh, feel free to share your comments and uh, uh, subscribe. We intend to continue to produce some interesting uh, case studies and we'll hope to see you again soon. <laughs>